So parallel theorem is a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides parallel. So that's the blank. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we'll get in there. But by definition, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides parallel. So in that property column, we can obviously check the first one. And yes, both pair of opposite sides are congruent. Angles, as you saw in the warm up, are also congruent. And what do you think about the diagonal? Well, in the warm up, too, we had one diagonal that was longer. Diagonals bisect each other, yes, and we'll talk about what that means when we're going to mark the figure to the right. Diagonals bisect the angles, not in every parallelogram. We're going to get to our special parallelograms the rectangle rhombus square, and in some of those, the diagonals do bisect the angles. And in some of those, the diagonals are congruent. Consecutive sides congruent? No. Nope. And consecutive angles supplementary? Yes. So let's label this figure, this parallelogram, A, B, C, D. So let's draw one diagonal. Let's draw diagonal A, C. In the box below, and there will be some questions on your regions, that will ask you about the triangles within the parallelogram that are formed by drawing the diagonals. Since both pair of opposite sides are congruent, we know that AB is congruent to CD and BC is congruent to AD. So right now with the one diagonal, is triangle ABC congruent to CDA? Yes, by which postulate? Side, side, side. Side, side, side. Because they're reflexive on the diagonal. So we know the one or one of the triangles, the triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle. <laughs> nope. Because A to B is one dash line, A to D is two dash lines. So C, D, A. And B is congruent to D because they're opposite angles. Now let's draw the other diagonal, BD. And triangle BAD is congruent to what triangle? Looking at the other side. So BAD is congruent to, say that one more time, yes, by side, side, side again. All right, looking at the property of the diagonal, to look at the little four triangles on the inside. So we have triangle one, triangle two, triangle three, and triangle four. And when we add the fact that the diagonals bisect each other, that means this point in the middle is the midpoint of AC because BD bisects AC and also it's the midpoint of AC. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So they're not congruent. So all four of those segments in the interior are not congruent, but each segment of the two segments of the di one diagonal are congruent. So triangle one is congruent to which triangle? By side, side, side. So triangle one has one dash line, four dash line, three dash lines, and triangle three has one dash line, three dash lines, four dash lines. And then triangle two, congruent to triangle four. It'll also ask you what type of triangles they are. They are all the same type based on the length of the sides. So all the triangles are which type? Scalene. Scalene. Good. So in one through four, we're going to apply these properties in terms of algebra. And then in five through eight, we're going to look at some proofs. Okay, so let's look at the first question.
remember if there's an algebraic expression outside the figure, just like with triangles, that represents the length of a side. If there's an algebraic expression within the figure, that represents the measure of an angle. So if we look at the two expressions that are on the outside of the figure, what do you know about sides BC and AD of its parallelogram? They're congruent, so those lengths are equal. So 5x plus 19 equals 7x. And then let's look at the angles and we'll solve them both. So the expressions for the angles, 6y plus 5 represents the measure of angle B, and 10y minus 1 represents the measure of angle A. What's true about those consecutive angles? Supplementary. Now let's add it up right here. So 6y plus 10y, 16y, 5 minus 1, 4 equals 180. So we go back to the one in the left, subtract 5x. And 19 equals 2x divided by 2, and x is 9.5. Over here, subtract 4, and 16y equals 176 divided by 16, and y is 11. We had to find, or we have to find, AD. So AD is a 7x, so 7 times 9.5 AD. Now 9 times 7 is 63, and then half of 7 is 3.5. So 3.5 plus 63, yes. And then the measure of angle B, so plug in 11, 6 times 11 plus 5, what's the measure of angle B? 71. Two, it says we have parallelogram ABCD, diagonals AC and BD intersected E. If AE is 3x plus 2 and EC is 20, what's the value of x? So AE is 3x plus 2, EC is 20. What's the relationship between AE and DE? They are congruent because BD bisects this diagonal, so that's a midpoint. So 3x plus 2 equals 20, subtract 2, divide by 3, yes, and x is 6. In number 3, we have parallelogram ABCD. We're given the measure of angle BCD, so this angle right here, and the measure of angle DAB, this angle right here. What's true about the measures of those two angles? They are equal. The angles are congruent, so 11x plus 36 equals 4x plus 78. To find x, 11x minus 4x is 7x, and 78 minus 36 is 42. Divide by 7, and x is 6. And last, we have to find the area and perimeter of the parallelogram below in simplest radical form. The perimeter, how do you find perimeter? Add up all the sides. So perimeter is going to be 2 times 10, because opposite sides are congruent, and 2 times 6. Mm -hmm. 2 times 10, 20, plus the 12, 32 centimeters. Area, what's the formula? Base times height. We have a base of 10, but we're missing the height. How are we going to find the altitude or height? Mary? Um, what I was trying to do was I split it in triangles to figure out the different angles. Because um, this angle is 60, well, either way, you can just slide the altitude yeah. over. Well, I'm going to draw it from that vertex. And when you do that, that is a right triangle. And if, the one angle, if one of the acute angles is 60, this is 30. And if the hypotenuse is 6, what's the shorter leg? 3. And then the altitude is shorter leg radical 3. So our height 
is 3 radical 3. So in simplest radical form, 10 times 3 would be 30 radical 3 square centimeters. Now when you think about the proofs from triangle, in order to prove you had a right triangle, you had to show the triangle had one right angle. So you slope to show that two sides are perpendicular to show you have the right angle. Isosceles, you wanted to use distance to show you have at least two congruent sides. You can have three, but you need at least two. And with scalene, you had to show that no sides were congruent. So you had to find the length of all three. So when you do a proof, it's the same method. And if we go through the notes, much of it is spelled out for you because I didn't want to spend time on going through the steps and method of the proofs again. It's the same method, same steps. We're just trying to show, in this case, a parallelogram. And you have more than one way to do it. I choose because it's the shortest, it's less work. But you can pick if they don't specify any method that you'd like. So to prove or show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, use one of the following methods. So one method is to show that both pair of opposite sides are parallel. So you want to show that both pair of opposite sides have the same slope for parallel. You can also show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent. And you would use distance or show they have the same length. That in both of those um, methods involve four calculations. So the slope of all four sides, the length of all four sides. The next method is to show that one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. Still four calculations. My method of choice when looking at my answer keys is this one. To show that the diagonals bisect each other, okay, remember that a segment bisector intersects a segment where? Okay, at its midpoint. So to show that the diagonals bisect each other, you show that the diagonals have the same midpoint. So you just calculate the midpoint of one diagonal, midpoint of versus four. So this is always my method of choice. We have three proofs, and again, oh, before we do the proof, this is a multiple choice question from the state. So take a look at this. Um, quadrilateral ABC is diagonals AC and BD. So if you draw a picture, AC, BD, which information is not, keyword, not sufficient to prove that ABC is a parallelogram? So in number one, it says that AC and BD, so those are the diagonals. If you show that the diagonals bisect each other, I said number one, is that not sufficient? That is sufficient. That is a method, so it is a method to show right up here. To show that the diagonals bisect each other, and that was the method I ch uh, um, choose. That's a method to show it's a parallelogram. The next one, so in green, AB congruent to CD. So AB congruent to CD and BC congruent to AD. So is it not sufficient to show that both pair of opposite sides are congruent? Did I want to pick answer choice two? That is sufficient. That's enough. Good. So one and two work. The next one, choice three, AB congruent to CD and AB is parallel. So is it not sufficient to show that one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel? Good, that is. So that must leave us, how many of you chose four? The last one? Good. Chose two, huh? Um, AB congruent to CD. So if you show that AB is congruent to CD and then BC is parallel, yeah, that doesn't work. Do you have to show that both pair are congruent or both are parallel? Or one is both congruent and parallel? Okay. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right, our proofs. Step 
one, and according to geometry proof, is write the formula it's written. Uh, or maybe step one is to graph. So I graphed it for you. Um, I had the step two, then I wrote the formula for you. So we're going to use midpoint. So if I want to use coordinate geometry, so that means using distance, midpoint, or slope, how am I going to show using midpoint that it's a parallelogram? Yeah. Yeah, find the midpoint of DF and GE to show that they share the same midpoint and bisect each other. So let's write that out. So for DF, the midpoint equals and GE. Midpoint is the average of the x's and y's. So for df, the x's are negative 2, 2. The y's are 2 and 8. So negative 2 plus 2 over 2 and 2 plus 8 over 2. GE, it's negative 1 and 1 for x, 4 and 6 for y. What's the midpoint? Negative 2 plus 2 and negative 1 plus 1 is? For the x's? Zero. 0. And then 0 over 2? Two, 0. 2 plus 8 and 4 plus 6 is both 10. And 10 over 2 is 5. Now, I like to still use the since then therefore. You don't have to, and I'll do it different ways as we do each one. But you want to talk about the work that you just did. So since the midpoint of DF and GE, I'm going to add midpoint, are the same. What did that tell you? Then the diagonal bisect each other. Therefore, Quadrilateral, what is it? What is the name of it? Yep. D E F G is a parallelogram. Method to use. So in the next one, it says the vertices of quadrilateral A, B, C, D are A12, B25, C57, D44. Using the distance formula show that quadrilateral D, F, G is a parallelogram. That should be A, B, C, D. That's what I get for copy and pasting. All right, so I graphed it. Step one's done. Step two's done. I even with this uh, proof in our notes, I did all the calculations just to save us time. And then more importantly, we need to talk about the write-up. What is the length of AB when you simplify the radical? Right? Square root of 10. And CD is also square root of 10. What about the length of BC and AD? Nine plus four, 13. Now, I'm going to, instead of doing the since then therefore, show you how you can abbreviate. So here you could say that equal length means that AB is congruent to CD. Equal length here means that BC is congruent to AD. And then, since both pairs of opposite sides are 
are congruent, um, quadrilateral, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. So the quadrilateral Q, R, S, T, let me sketch it. The vertices are given algebraically. And we need to prove that it's a parallelogram. So I put slope in there because we have yet to use slope. And I wanted to practice all four methods and all four formulas again. But how would you use slope to show it's a parallelogram? We'll talk about that first. If you want to use slope, what do you do? Sherber? Yeah, so we want to show that QR is parallel to ST, and we want to show that RS is parallel to QT. Good. So then, yes, their slopes would be equal. I'm going to write, um, try to fit it all in this space so we don't have to move it up. So QR, what's the slope? ST, what's the slope? And then RS. The slope equals MQT. I like to write it all out first and then do the calculations last. So slope is a fraction. So for QR, change of Y would be 0 minus B, 0 minus A. is going to be B minus 0 and then A plus C minus C. RS. RS is 0 minus 0, C minus 0. And then QT is B minus B, A plus C minus A. Now let's do the math. What is the fraction for QR, the slope of QR reduced to? Mary? Um, now it reduces further, and you should always put it in reader's form. Negative over negative is positive. And then B minus 0 is B. And then this C minus C, that's a negative inverse. You get 0, or cancels out, and we get B over A. And then here, 0 minus 0, 0. C minus 0, C. And 0 divided by anything we can fully reduce is 0. Undefined is when you divide by 0. So B minus B is 0, and then A, uh, so negative A is the negative inverse, you get 0, and then we get C, which is 0. So I like making the little notes, so I'm going to squeeze it in here. Um, equal slope means that QR is parallel to ST, and these equal slopes means that RS is parallel to QT. But I've yet to state the property of the parallelogram or why it is a parallelogram. So because both pair of opposite sides are parallel, what's true? Quadrilateral, what's the name? QRST is a parallelogram.